that to everybody. Because we all get to celebrate. We all get to celebrate. That's the cool thing about a lot of these things. Uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day, New Year's Day, whatever it is. We all get an opportunity to celebrate with whoever is the focal point of that day. So, as a dad, yes, I'm sure most dads are just fine having the kids help out and enjoy the day as well sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. But, <laughs> not always. But yes, it is. And so now, now we have a day ahead of us and we are trying to figure out what to do with that day. Most of the time, most of the time there's going to be some kind of grilling. That's, that's what dads generally end up doing. Uh, a little bit of hamburgers, hot dogs, brats, whatever it is. And we grill out because you get to be outside. And, and it's a little easier and dad kind of takes, sometimes takes charge of the grill. Not always. but So we do our grilling or we do a dinner or like this morning we had our breakfast here. Um, it's kind of interesting. It seems that Father's Day kind of revolves around food for some reason. <laughs> it's always something good about, about eating. So we have, we have you, you see the, the, the commercials uh, over past, I don't know, forever, where you have the best grill, right? You can get a charbroiled grill, or you can get um, a grill from Sears, a Craftsman grill, or you can get a, a Kenmore grill. You can get any kind of these grills, and they are all billed as being the grill that's going to give you the best hamburger, apparently better than this other one. So you need to buy theirs. But it leads us into all these products. All these products that, that are there and they describe to you how much better ours is than somebody else's. You know the salsa commercials? You know, where, where paste picante sauce, uh, it's an insult to be made in New York City, right? Or the ice cream is better, it's because of the cows. Right? Because the cows, that's why ours is better. And you have your sodas and your chips and whatever else it is. And everybody has something that's just better, it tastes better than somebody else's. And when it comes down to it, really, there's, there's unless you get a really, really an off-brand, like, like Chaplin Mark's, you know, tortilla chips, you aren't really going to get anything bad, <laughs> okay? But everybody's out there trying to have theirs be the best. And that's kind of a, that's kind of a, a Father's Day thing, I guess. And uh, you'll have a taste test, and ours will be the number one in this taste test. Well, we come to Matthew today. We come to Matthew uh, chapter 5, right after the Beatitudes. And it's kind of like fatherly advice that, that uh, Jesus has given his disciples. Kind of a, a Father's Day kind of a, a, a word here. It's Matthew 5, verses, uh, I think, 13 to 16. It says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. He goes on, he says, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, neither do people hunt, light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it, put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. I, I consider that to be some, it, it sounds like a dad. It sounds like a dad, because every once in a while, dads will get the, the, the opportunity to give their kids a little piece of advice, lifelong learning, a little bit of advice that will get them through, uh, through the rest of their life. Some proverbial, poetic kind of advice. And this is kind of what it sounds like here. It kind of sounds like a dad who would be standing there with the son or daughter and saying, saying to their child, you are the salt of the earth. All right. Now we need to understand that Jesus, one of the main things to understand when we read the Bible is who are they talking to? I found that sometimes it's very important to understand, well most of the time, very important to understand who that text is being written to. Because if it's written to unbelievers, it's going to say one thing and you understand it a little bit differently. 
But you need to understand that the Beatitudes and this next portion here, this is all where Jesus is talking to his disciples. Right? The information you get from that is that the disciples are already are believers. They're considered the faithful. They're following Jesus. They're his disciples. That way, we look at it and we say, this is associated with something we would give to each other in the church, to another fellow believer. It's important to understand that because it has a whole different context to it if you're talking to a believer than you would be if you're talking to a non-believer. All right? So we understand that Jesus is talking to his disciples here. And he starts on, he says, you are the salt of the earth. You've heard that. You know this is where it comes from. You know, you know when in the, in the old movies or in the uh, way back when you have your, your, your neighborhood people and your, your grandpa's friend and, and he had come over and, and you shared dinner with him or... You know, he may be down on his luck. You help him out with something. You, you give him a little bit of gas for a vehicle, whatever. You ever hear some of these people and they say, you know, you're the salt of the earth. You hear that from people. So, of course, first of all, you need to understand that that's a compliment. All right. It can be overlooked when this comes out, but it's a compliment. So that's how we understand this portion, portion from Jesus, talking to his disciples. He's complimenting them and he's encouraging them for the future. All right? He says, you're the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? There's a purpose to the salt. Now when I'm looking over this over the past week, I'm looking over a few things, and I'm, I'm, I'm researching a little bit here and there. And inevitably, the people who are doing the research and doing the background studies and, and commentators and all these people, inevitably, they will come up with the preservation idea of salt. They'll come out with, with all these different purposes of salt. All right? And those are, those are referred to. In John, uh, in, in other portions of the scripture where it talks about salt, it talks about one of the other attributes. But again, when we're, and I'm, it sounds like I'm, I'm, I'm beating on this horse pretty bad. But when it comes to the words of Jesus, what we need to do is understand a few very specific things to understand what he's actually trying to get at. Now number one, we understand he's talking to his disciples. He's talking to believers. So this word is for us as believers. All right. Number two, he's saying he's talking about salt as it adds taste to whatever it's combined with. So whatever else salt does, in this passage of scripture, it's irrelevant. All right. It doesn't matter what else salt does. In this portion of scripture, Jesus is saying salt is something that adds flavor. It's something that helps the taste. All right, so do you see where we are? Jesus is calling the disciples the salt of the earth. It adds taste. It adds flavor. It adds excitement. Okay, so Jesus is telling his disciples, you are the flavor that God has in this world. You're the ones who change it from being a bland, boring, toiling, difficult world and gives it something to look forward to. Being a believer, you have influence over how the world is seen and how those in the world see each other. But in order to have that influence, you have to remain salty. <laughs> you have to remain salty. So that salt obviously, is your rebirth, is your Christianity, it's your faith, it's your belief. That's what's different about you than everybody else in the world. All the unbelievers in the world, what makes you different is that you are a believer and it's that belief, it's that faith, it's that foundation you stand on, that's what makes you different, that's what makes this world exciting. 